Hey, Callie Chappelle here, and thanks for tuning into this video, the format of debate. This video is part of the Novice Go Fight Win Debate series, a series of videos dedicated towards teaching novices the basics of policy debate. So again, my name is Callie Chappelle, and I'm a former debater for the University of Michigan. I debated at Traverse City Central High School, and I currently coach at Gulliver Prep. I'm a 2N1A, and fun fact about me, I'm a true blue 2N. So, how do you make the most of these videos? Well, you should take notes, and you should rewatch bits that you need re-explained. Hopefully, we'll have worksheets and or supplemental materials that will go along with the video, so check out the video description to see if I posted anything there. If I haven't, nag me. And most importantly, you don't need to memorize at all. This video especially is going to have a lot of information, but what I want you to do is be familiar with everything in the video, but you don't have to know all of it in detail. It's a building process. So, question for you. Do you remember the two sides in a debate? Well, there are two. The first side is the affirmative, or the AF team, and they give reasons why the resolution is good. So, for example, they could have an AF plan that says the government shouldn't make private businesses change their technologies for the purposes of domestic surveillance. The NEG team gives reasons why the AF's plan is a bad idea or doesn't fit under the resolution. So, an example is that you could say the government surveillance is good because it allows us to prevent a terrorist attack. So, what is the general format of debate? There are eight speeches in a debate and each team gets a set amount of time to prove their point, and speeches are timed. There's a specific order of who speaks and when, and there are four participants in the debate. Each person gives one constructive speech, one rebuttal speech, asks questions once, and answers questions once. Just a disclaimer, this can be really confusing, so buckle up and don't be afraid to ask questions in the comment section or rewatch parts that you need to re-explain. There are multiple speaker positions in a debate. On the AF team, there is a 1A, or first affirmative speaker, and a 2A, a second affirmative speaker. The 2A is the head of the AF team. On the NEG team, there are two similar positions, the 1N, or the first negative, and the 2N, or second negative. The 2N is the head of the NEG team. Usually, one person is the 2A and the 1A and 2N, and their partner is the 1N and 2A. So when I say I'm a true blue 2N, that means that normally I give the 1A and 2N speeches. My partner would give the 1N and 2A speeches. So here are some tips and tricks for a good partnership. You should always listen to your partner and value their advice, and you should also communicate well while debating. Two minds are always better than one. Don't lone wolf. Learn together. Regardless of whether you win or lose, you can always learn something from every round, and sometimes you need your partner to be like, hey, you could have done this better, or hey, you did a really great job at this, or hey, I agree about this, or hey, I disagree about that. If you lose, don't beat yourself up and your partner. Don't beat your partner up. Definitely don't beat yourself up with words or actions. And have fun together. Support one another. Having a great partner is one of the great joys of debate. Hey, Here's a story, novice partners and best friends forever. So my novice partner was Hannah Casperson and here's a picture, a selfie we took, I'm really bad at selfies, uh, at our very first tournament ever. And here's a picture of us at our high school graduation. We're still friends. So we had a really great communication. We worked together really well. And you know, we're still great friends even though we no longer debate together. So types of speeches, remember there are two. The first type of speech is a constructive and that those occur at the beginning of the debate. They are eight minutes long, and these are the speeches where you make all your arguments and you respond to your opponent's new arguments. There's a three minute cross-examination period at the end. The second type of speech are rebuttals, and those occur at the end of the debate. Those are five minutes long, so a little shorter than constructives, and these are the speeches where you give reasons why your argument is better and compare evidence and respond to arguments, but you can't make new arguments in these speeches, so constructives, build your case, make new arguments, rebuttals, you can only respond to arguments previously made. And each debater gets one constructive, one rebuttal, and one cross-examination in a debate round. So here's the order of the speeches. It's gonna look like a lot, but I'm gonna explain it in depth. The first speech is the 1AC, or first affirmative constructive, that's eight minutes. Then, after the 1AC, the 1A will stay standing because they'll be standing up giving their speech, and then the 2N will ask them questions during cross-ex, and cross-examination is three minutes. Cross-examination is going to have its totally own separate video in this series, so check that out. Next is the 1NC, the first negative constructive. That speech is eight minutes, and after that speech, the 1N stays standing and the 1A cross-exes the 1N. That means the 1A will ask questions to the 1N. 
After that comes the 2AC, which is the second affirmative constructive. Again, it's constructive, so it's eight minutes. And the 2A stay standing because they just spoke. And then the 1N cross exit. So do you see a pattern here? Every person who gives a speech will stay standing after their speech and get questions asked about their speech by someone else on the opposing team. And ironically, the person who asks them questions from the opposing team is the person from the opposing team who is not giving the next speech. So you'll notice that the 2N cross X is the 1AC because the next speech is the 1NC, so the other next speaker is going to speak here. The, two, the 1NC gets cross x by the 1A because the next speech is by the second affirmative speaker. And the uh, 1N cross X is the 2A after the 2AC because the next speech is going to be the 1NC. So the, two, or the 2NC. So the 2NC is the second negative constructive, just like all other constructives, is eight minutes. And afterwards, as you might have guessed, the 2N stay standing and then they get cross X'd by the 2A. After that come the rebuttals and there are no cross X's after the rebuttals. The 1NR occurs, the 1AR, the 2NR, and the 2AR. So whoa, I know, that was a lot. So let's take a look at what these patterns are. And I'm just going to point out again, visually, what we were saying before. That everyone has two speeches. So the 1A is represented here in red, so let's just zoom in on the 1A. The 1A has two speeches, the 1AC, the first affirmative constructive, and the 1AR, the first affirmative rebuttal. And the uh, 1A gets cross-exed once, right after the 1AC, and the 1A cross-exes once. It cross they cross-ex the 1NC. So you have to see the patterns, and you'll notice that, as I said, everyone gets two speeches, everyone gets two cross-exes, asking and answering. And it goes one, one, two, two, one, one, two, two, and the affirmative and negative switch speeches every time, except for this, which is the next block where we have two next speeches right in a row. So pop quiz, ready? First, what are the four speaker positions? What are the two types of speeches? What is the order of speeches in a debate? What speech comes after the two AC? What speech comes after the 1AC? Who cross-examines the 1N speaker? Who gives the last speech in a debate? Who is the head of the neg team? Oh, we went too fast. Okay, so look at these questions. Take out a sheet of paper. Take out the sheet of paper. Take it out and answer these questions. Okay, pause me. Okay, gotta assume that you did that. I'm, yeah, I'm watching you right now through the screen. Make sure you do it. And let's go through the answers. So the four speaker positions are the 1A, the 2A, the 1N, and the 2N. The two types of speeches are constructives, which are how many minutes? Eight minutes. And rebuttals, which are five minutes. The order of speeches in a debate are, oh, let's see if you got this one. 1AC, 1NC, 2AC, 2NC, 1NR, 1AR, 2NR, 2AR. And remember, you can always take up a sheet of paper that has this all written down that you can refer to during a debate. Don't worry, my very first debate, I definitely cross x the wrong person because I didn't know what the order was. Um, the speech that comes after the 2AC is the 2NC, right? Because it goes 1, 1, 2, 2. So after the 2AC, the second negative speaker would speak. What speech comes after the 1AC? The 1NC, because... 1-1, one, 1-AC, one, one 1-NC. One Who cross-examines the 1-N speaker? Well, let's think about this rationally. The person who cross -ex so the person who cross is the 1-N is going to be from the other team, so it's going to be an F, an F person. And it's going to be the F person who doesn't give the speech right after the 1-NC. So the speech that comes after the 1-NC is the 2-AC. So that means that the person who cross-examines the 1-N would have to be the 1-A. Who gives the last speech in the debate? The 2A does, and that speech is the 2AR. And the head of the neg team is the 2N, and the head of the AF team is the 2A. Prep time. So you have time in a debate round to prepare your speeches, and this time is called prep time or just prep. So most judges give you eight minutes of prep, uh, even though there are like a couple of weird state circuits that give you six minutes and then there's one tournament that gives you 10 minutes. So it, it does vary, but usually it's eight minutes and you can ask for prep time before any of your speeches. So if you're app, you can prep before the 1AC, the 2AC, the 1AR, the 2AR. You can prep while the other team is taking prep time as well. 
and if you work well with your partner, you will make the most out of your prep time. But eight minutes isn't enough time to prepare 26 minutes of speeches, you're probably asking me. Well, to be honest, most preparation for speeches actually occurs before the debate even starts. This is why research and preparation beforehand matter a lot. Research is done before tournaments. And the 1AC and most of the 1NC speeches are pre-written before the debate round, if you're prepared. So, in order to be prepared and to use your prep time wisely, make sure you know where you can find things in your Dropbox. If you hear a new argument, then you should write down a response so you don't have to think of it again when you hear the argument again. Flowing. So, to keep track of what's been said and quickly organize your speeches, we use a note-taking technique called flowing, and we'll talk about this more later in the flowing video. So, let's talk about the speeches, each speech in order and its main purpose. So, there are more details about each speech are in the being af and being neg videos, but this is the overview. So, how do you know who gives what speech? Well, it's actually in the name. As Shakespeare said, a rose without, no, never mind. If you knew a rose's name, would it smell sweet? No, I shouldn't have brought this up because I don't actually know what Shakespeare says. But, who gives the speech is denoted in the name. The 2A, C, the 2A gives the speech. Uh, and here, the C says what kind of speech it is, in this case, a constructive speech. Because remember, 2AC just stands for second affirmative constructive. Pop quiz, 1NR, who gives the speech? What type of speech is it? Write it down. Are writing? Okay, I'm gonna assume that you wrote it down. Who gives the speech? The 1N, it's in the name. And what type of speech is it? A rebuttal. So let's talk about each speech in turn. The 1AC, or the first affirmative constructive. So the goal of the 1AC is where the AF team presents their proposed action and explains why it's better than the current system or the status quo. The 1AC is 100% prescripted and prepared before the debate. Usually the order of the 1AC is as follows. First is the plan, what action you propose to take. So an example of a plan text would be, the United States federal government should prohibit federal agencies from requiring or compelling private entities to design or alter their commercial information technology products for the purposes of facilitating domestic surveillance. The second thing is adherency. So why the plan or your action isn't already being done now. So one side note about inherency is it's kind of gone out of vogue to include in 1ACs. So sometimes uh, you'll notice that plans don't have inherency, that doesn't mean they automatically lose, it just means they have to read it in the 2AC if you bring it up in the 1NC. Harms. Harms are the adva are advantages. So these are problems with the current situation that the AF would fix. And the third is solvency, and these are reasons why doing the plan will solve the problems that you've presented. The second speech is the 1NC, or the first negative constructive. And the purpose of the 1NC is where the negative response to the 1AC F plan and then gives reasons why it's a bad idea. There are a variety of types of arguments that can be made or quote unquote run in the 1NC, and we'll talk that about that uh, in later videos. So the goal of the 1NC is to prove that the AF plan causes more problems than it helps, that essentially the AF's harms are worse than its advantages. So there are two different ways you can do that. The first are called on-case arguments, and these are arguments that are directly in response to the AF plan's advantages. The second are called off-case arguments, and uh, these are other arguments that give reasons why the affirmative plan is a bad idea. For future reference, DAs, counterplans, Ks, and T are all examples of off-case arguments. It's a totally fine if you don't know what those are. We're going to be watching videos about them soon. And this speech is mainly prescripted, since you usually know the other team's AF plan beforehand and are already prepared. The next speech is the second affirmative constructive, or the 2AC. And there are two big goals of the 2AC. The first is to explain again, or what we call extend, the reasons why the AF plan is a good idea. And the second thing is to respond to all negative arguments about why your app plan is bad. So you should respond to arguments in the order the 1AC made them. So most of the speech is also prescripted if you're well prepared. And if you know the arguments a neg team will make against you, you can prepare responses. This is called making blocks. And blocks are both for the app and neg teams. And we'll talk about how to make them later. Often arguments in your 1AC are responses to negative arguments, and I guess I should make a quick caveat that uh, you should respond to arguments in the order the 1AC made them, um, in the context of case, and you can answer the off-case arguments, remember counterplans, T, DAs, don't worry, we'll talk about this, in the order that you so choose. And in the being AF and being neg videos, it tells you the most effective way to answer those arguments. 
Next comes the negative block. That's the 2NC and the 1NR. And because the next two speeches are both made by the negative, two next speeches in a row, and together, they're known as the neg block or just the block. Um, and even though the neg has to respond to all the arguments made in the 2AC, the neg team has two speeches to answer everything in the 2AC. So instead of repeating the same thing twice, uh, which would be boring for everyone involved, we do something called splitting the block. That means that the neg team divides up what they're going to say, so the 2N says half in the 2NC and the 1N says half in the 1NR. And you decide what arguments you want to make in the block, what arguments the 2N's going to make and what arguments the 1N's going to make so you don't repeat the arguments before the cross-examination of the 2AC. So what happens is the 2AC happens and then and then the neg team's like, can we take some prep? Judge is like, yes, of course. And then you're like, whisper to yourselves and you're like, okay, you're going to take the DA and case and 2NC and I'm going to take the counter plan and the 1NR and you're like, okay, hey, break. And then you do the cross-ex of the 2AC. Why do you do that? Because you always want to ask questions. The You want the 1N who cross-exes the 2AC to be able to ask questions about relevant things and not ask questions about things that are not relevant. So what are the goals of this negative block? Well, the first is to respond to every argument made in the 2AC and also to create and deploy a winning strategy for the end of the debate. Also beneficial is to make more arguments than the AF team can respond to in the 1AR, which is the next AF speech. And remember, the 1NR is shorter than the 2NC, but they have more time to prepare. Also remember that the 1NR is a rebuttal, so you can't make new arguments. You can only talk about arguments that were made in the, 2N, in the 1NC and extrapolate on those and respond to affirmative arguments. So you can't read a new argument, like a new DA or a new counter plan in the 1NR. Uh, you can only do that in the 2NC. After the neck block is the 1AR, or the first affirmative rebuttal. So the goal of the 1AR is to build on arguments that were made in the 2AC and then answer all arguments made in the neck block. And to be honest, the 1AR is not going to have enough time to talk about every argument in the 2AC. So you as the 1A have to pick which arguments are the best and also know which ones you're winning. But more importantly, you need to focus on the arguments that will win you the debate and explain those very well. It doesn't matter if you give the best explanation of the tiny argument that no one cares about because that's not going to be the argument that wins you the debate. Instead, you might want to invest time on major things that you're losing to make sure that you can win the debate at the very end of the day. And it's better to explain less very well than a lot really poorly. The last negative speech in the debate is the 2NR, the second negative rebuttal. And the goal of this speech is to explain a package that will win you the debate. You should explain why doing the AF is a worse idea than not doing the AF or the status quo. And every 2NR must include, in this order, star this, first an overview. So where you say, if you only remember three things from my speech, the three most important things are, and then say them, and then second, after you do the overview, you have to refute every affirmative argument made in the 1AR about the argument you're making. You must do that. You cannot drop, you cannot forget to respond to particular affirmative arguments made in the 1AR. The last speech in the debate is the second affirmative rebuttal or 2AR. And the goal of the 2AR is to explain why doing the AF is a better idea than not doing the AF. And every 2AR must include, in this order, one, an explanation of what the pl AF plan does, because the judge, who may be sleeping or something, may not remember exactly all the details about the plan. The second uh, is that you have to explain why the AF plan is a good idea, so these are usually the advantages of the AF plan. The third is why the world with the AF plan is better than the world without the AF plan. And then fourth, you need to refute all negative arguments made in the 2NR. So it sounds pretty simple, but it actually is a little bit complicated in the debate. And that was a lot. I know it was a lot to take in. And it's okay. It's like having the game of basketball explained to you without ever seeing a basketball game. I'd be like, I don't know what you crazy people are talking about, because that sounds crazy. But we're going to have a demo debate. I will... I will try to upload a demo debate to Go Fight Win soon so you can speed the speeches in action or take a look around online to see what's what's there because the biggest way to understand what I'm talking about is to actually just see a debate happening. And I think hopefully you'll be giving your own speech for a mini debate soon and the best way to do to learn is by actually doing it. So we'll have more videos coming detailing each speech individually. That's the how to be AF and how to be neg videos. But I think a good timeline for you is to rewatch this video if you're confused then try to watch some demo debates, even if those debates aren't on this topic, that's okay. 
And after you watch a couple of debates and are like, yeah, I like, kind of get what's going on, even if you like, even if it's somewhat challenging, then go and watch the being AF and being neg video for more information. So here's an activity. The 1AC should make a statement. So what I'm, what you should do is round up a group of four of your friends and one person gets to be the 1A, one person gets to be the 1N, one person's the 2A, one person's the 2N, and just do this. So the 1A, make a statement about why the, wow, I didn't change this for this year's topic, I'm sorry. You should make a statement about why the federal government should substantially curtail domestic surveillance, just cross this out of your mind. Uh, the 1N should refute the point made by the 1AC and make an additional point about why the plan is too expensive or is ineffective. The 2AC should defend the point made by the 1AC and answer the argument made by the 1NC. The 2NC should continue the attack on the 2AC, on the 1AC. The 1NR should continue supporting the additional point about why the plan is too expensive. The 1AR should respond to the previous two speeches. The 2NR should state why your arguments are more correct than theirs and why the judge should vote for you. And the 2AR should state why your arguments are more correct than theirs and why the judge should vote for you. The affirmative. So you should sit down and try this out um, because the big, the best way to kind of figure out the general feel of debate is to just sit down and do it. And if you don't have enough time to do a full debate, this I think is a great start. One last thing, cross-examination. So at the end of every constructive speech, there's a three minute cross X and judges don't usually write down what happens in cross X, but it's commonly accepted that what is said in cross X is binding in a debate round. So for example, if your partner admits a major concession to the other team, you can't just come up and be like, oops, they lied in the next speech. If you're good at cross X, then judges will give you higher speaker points. So it's a great way to come off as awesome because everybody knows your swag's bigger than the room. And you should always use all three minutes of cross X. It's free prep time for your partner. So if you don't know what to ask, think of something on your feet. But to be honest, don't worry too much about cross X right now. Make sure that you understand everything first and that'll really help you get give a really fantastic cross X. But check out the cross examination video for more details, it'll be below. Signposting and road mapping. So this is really important. At the beginning of your speech, you need to say the order of the arguments you'll be addressing so the judge knows how you'll organize your speech. The judge, when they flow or take notes, will take notes on each argument on an individual sheet of paper. So telling the judge the order in which you'll be speaking helps the judge organize their sheets of paper before you start talking. You should give the order of the off case arguments and the advantages only. You don't have to give the order of the arguments within each sheet of paper, within each major argument. All right, so what are the big ideas here? The first is there are speaker positions and time limits. You don't have to memorize it all right now, but because you can just copy the order and times down and have a cheat sheet during the debate. You should know that each speaker has a certain responsibility, so you should know what your role is in the debate. If you don't know, then go back and look at the video when you find out what your speaker positions are. Because you need to know what I'm saying, like, the role of the 1NC is to do this. You need to know, like, if I'm given the 1NC, what am I supposed to be doing? And the third thing is, take a deep breath. Zen. Don't freak out. Yes, there's a process to debate. We don't expect you to learn it all at once. It takes time and practice. I have seen top varsity debaters forget when they were supposed to speak and stand up for the wrong speeches. I have seen top judges forget who was supposed to speak or forget how much time was supposed to be given for a speech. Everybody makes mistakes, everybody's still learning, and you are just at the beginning of a really exciting journey. So I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you'll turn into more in the future. Go fight win.